hello everyone welcome to my video in this video we're going to be looking at this topic kubernetes static pods and mainly i'm going to be covering three uh, sections one is actually the difference between normal pods and static pods and i'm going to show you how to create static pods and there are two different methods uh, we'll look at that Finally, I'll show you a practical use case of static pods. Let's start with the difference between normal pods and static pods. First, the pods that we normally create. It's the most granular resource that is managed in a Kubernetes cluster. It can contain one or more containers where applications are deployed. You can mount storages as volumes. They get their own IPs, which are temporary and so on creating a pod is quite straightforward you just need a yaml file with a certain pod specification then you can use kubectl apply command to create the pod at a high level this is what happens behind the scenes when you execute kubectl apply command the cli will communicate with kube api server then the kube api server will call kube scheduler service to find a suitable node for creating our pod. Then the API server will instruct kubelet to create the pod. Around the same time, kube API server will store the metadata about this pod creation in HC database. The components like kube API server, kube scheduler, and HCD are part of Kubernetes control plane, which run on a master node, whereas kubelet agent runs on a worker node. You can see how all these control plane components work together to create a normal pod. On the other hand, Kubelet agent alone can create and manage static pods. If you pay close attention to a Kubelet process running in a Kubernetes cluster, you will see that it uses a few config files. There is a parameter called static pod path in the config file highlighted here. Please do note the directory name this parameter is assigned to. Which brings us to the first method of creating static pods. So if you create a pod spec YAML file in the directory we just noted, kubelet process will create a static pod for us. Also, please note that a node name is added to the name of the static pod. Now let's move on to the second method of creating static pods. Let's say you want to put your static pod YAML files in a totally different directory. You can make kubelet process aware of that directory by using pod manifest path parameter. When you check the status of kubelet service, you will see that there is another config file in a drop-in directory. And the config file tells us how the kubelet process is started and how to set the arguments used by the kubelet process. Here, I'm setting the pod manifest path argument in a separate file called kubelet in hc default directory. What I realized is, in kub system namespace, I saw some static pods running actually. And yes, master is my master node name. And that's what actually gave it away. And when I checked the, the manifest directory, which is the directory that static pod path points to, I saw a few YAML files. So these pod YAML files must have been created during installation and later kubelet process must have created these pods. Ultimately, key components like kube API server, hcd and kube scheduler were created as static pods. That's it about static pods. And do check out the Kubernetes playlist I created and you will find it really useful. Thank you. I'll see you guys on the other side.